what's up everyone my name is Jeff and today we're going to have some fun playing magic and I'm going to emphasize fun here because we are playing jink like jink tribal how about that but it's really one drop tribal so everything in our deck except for the lurus that's in the sideboard is a one drop creature so only one mana stuff 39 creatures four instant spells uh three enchantments and 14 land is what we're going for here and uh <laughs> Uh, oh, perfect day for the deck is all for one, all for one man. I, I like that. <laughs> and uh, basically, we're playing a bunch of one drops. We're going to try to see if very few lands, uh, all one drops do have a chance. My, my uh, thoughts are is that we're probably going to win like two or three games out of ten. Uh, just because there's a lot of stuff, especially I'm playing in Historic right now, where Historic is is uh, fast enough right now that we're probably not going to be that fast compared to other people. But the whole benefit of this is that we get to play down two spells a turn consistently. People that have like a slow start, or whatever, we can you know ramp up to get out you know ten power uh, worth of stuff on the board fairly quickly, fairly easily. And so uh, <laughs> it was actually really hard to trim down to 60 cards with this, which is surprising because there's so many good one drops that it's worth having. You know, you can go all in on Snowport Sentry and try to get Ascend, but with how few lands we're playing, it's the odds of us actually getting to Ascend is pretty small. And so uh, I'm not sure if we actually play that. Same type of thing with Skymatcher Aspirant. Uh, but otherwise, it could be a one mana 3-3 three, three for us, which is epic. You know, we have a bunch of flyers that we could throw in as well over playing, uh, you know, things that won't maybe be flyers that ever speaker of heavens soul warden like all these cards that are always epic but you usually play them with like life gaining synergies like Kiliad and all these kinds of things that make them better so is soul warden actually worthwhile i think so <laughs> but, but we're gonna go ahead and check it out we're gonna jump into some gameplay see how it does for us and uh wish me luck <laughs> up against dan bring it on dan keep this oh yeah oh uh, yeah Okay, Lava Runner. Well, we're going to gain all of our lives. How about that? Let's go... Um, let's go Healer's Hawk. Pass the turn. I, I'd like to drop the Legion's Landing on the turn that we can swing in and immediately flip it. That's, that's the dream. All right. It's a good thing that we are obviously doing a lot more on our turn than the, the, the opponents are doing on their turn. <laughs> Yikes. Okay, I guess now we go for Soul Warden and Snubhorn's entry as a blocker. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> oh, back up to 20. Here we go. <laughs> oh, I did forget All Seed of Life's Bounty. Yeah, All Seed would be good for sure. Oh, we got blockers for days, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're good. <laughs> Uh, see, but the thing is, 14 lands so far has been the right amount. See so the critics. All right, well, let's go with... Uh, we actually got the three lands. This is ridiculous. All right. Uh, Legion's Landing, Sky Marcher Aspirant, Selfless Savior, an Indestructible Blocker. What you gonna do about it, foo? Pass the turn. We do want to keep... All three of these guys alive to flip legion's landing bring lures to hand and be able to use charge like as a, a fun thing so i think i'm gonna say no blocks right now we can take four for a bit we have life gain stuff we can do alchemist that's fine that's fine pass to my turn fairy guide mother that's also really nice uh you know in fact we're going to go ahead and just gain some life with this real quick so let's go ahead and Put some manas there. All attack. Let's see if they will block the aspirant with the alchemist. There we go. Okay, we'll go ahead and charge now. It gains us a little bit more life, kills the thing, and we get to bring out Fairy Guide Mother. A booyah, man! Psh. Easy peasy, guys, and we're winning against Mono Red Aggro. Or this is—I think this is just burn. No blocks. Uh, we're winning the race right now, so that's fine. Down to 14. We're winning the race. We're winning the race. Okay, light up the stage. Get some lands they've been wanting. Pass to my turn. Healer's Hawk. Opponent scoops it up. Yes! <laughs> we got there with one drop tribal. <laughs> 
they probably saw the lyrics there and like, oh no, what can we ever do against that? <laughs> uh, we did have stuff with Savior and Luris, which is kind of cool, against a, a, a damage dealing deck, you know, so... <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> we win. We're good. Alright, up against the Lion Tamer. Bring it on. We have a lion for you. Uh, keep this. So I think we actually probably bring out the Leon and Vanguard because uh, maybe it dies right here, but because we can bring out two creatures that then gives us life gain and the pump and we have a one mana 2-2 two -two immediately. Oh crap. I could bring out Giant Killer go for like fight as one and goblins are going to be bad. Um, we'll offer the trade though. I think they probably want more goblins out. Sure. Oh, they don't double block. How about that? All right, cool. Uh, now we can hold the fight as well. We have three lands. We're running 14 lands in this deck. This should not be happening. Uh, no blocks. We'll take it. We have all the life gain in the world, so it's all good. All good. Um, let's see, how do we do this? Okay, first off, Dauntless Bodyguard. Uh, let's put it on to... Venerable Knight actually becomes a pretty good blocker because we can put counter onto the Dauntless Bodyguard. Um, let's put onto Leonin Vanguard. Um, I, I want to hold up fight as one. I'm not sure if Giant Killer really ever kills anything before Muxus or whatever. So let's go ahead and just play that out. We'll hold up fight as one. Um... Yeah, we'll attack in. Winning the race down to 13, yo. That's the turn. <laughs> Maybe I should just be playing out the Fairy Guide Mother there just to get more threats. Oh my gosh. They've got a Chieftain. Skirt Prospector. All right, tons of ramp. Uh, we are going to kill one of these Chieftains if we can here. Okay, swings in safely. Uh, yeah, no blocks. Takes six down to thirteen. See, we're still we're still in the race in the runnings. All right. Um, aspirant. How much damage do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They have pretty dang close to lethal. Like any creatures that they play, we're dead. Um, Fight is one can help us do some stuff. So I think what we do is, man, I want another life linker out. Like I can put this onto the healer's hawk, but that's kind of what we've already got going for us. So I guess we'll, we'll just go to combat. Um, swing in, swing in, swing in, swing in. They take it all. All right, so two blockers, one's a vampire, so we can fight as one on each of those guys, which is nice. So I guess we're hoping for them to go all out with a swing and hoping that it doesn't kill us. <laughs> and, uh, you know, let's go ahead and play out Fairy Guide Mother then. Oh, man, it's it's three points of damage next turn in the air. That can be very nice for us. All right, pass the turn. Yeah, we're all in on fight as one. We can also tap down with something with Giant Killer if we need to. All right, you have the mana for a Muxus. Are we dead? Oh, here we go. How bad does it get? <laughs> it, it could be fine, guys. It, it could be okay. <laughs> it might not hurt us that much. <laughs> There's always that chance. Watch the Krako be in hand now. The sack. Here, 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 here. Oh, they only need three mana. Get the Krako out. 
go wide. I'm, do they have lethal right now? Probably. Pretty pretty sure it's thing closed, right? We can block two of the biggest things for... Yeah, so we'll... Uh... <laughs> we'll make him do it. Yeah, we'll make him do it. <laughs> Guys, we're actually a turn away from beating goblins with this. Like, that doesn't mean that we got there, but we were a turn away. Block, block. Fight is won. <laughs> uh, wait, can I use both, right? Okay, yeah, there we go. Human, non-human. Oh, yeah. Indestructible, guys. We're, we're definitely dead, but... Like, they had to get a pretty big hit with Muxus to actually kill us there. Uh, which they did. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, man. <laughs> That's all right. It's all right. On to the next one. Oh, man. I just don't know if I'm ever going to stop laughing while playing this. This is just ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, you know what? I think we have too many lands in the deck. <laughs> Man, I can't take myself seriously. <laughs> we should go down to 12. Or 10. We could have used all of that meta. Dude, we consistently are having massive amount of lands. We, Dude, 14 lands is way too many. What am I supposed to do with all this man? Oh wait, this is a tap land. Okay, we did find our lands that aren't planes. We're gonna have to shock ourselves quite a bit with this too. See, th this is our biggest issue is probably the um, the goblins decks. I'm not really sure how we beat them very easily. Uh, like Healer's Hawk can consistently get us damage in the air and gain us life, which is nice. Uh, let's go Sacred Cat. Yeah, pay for it. Eesh. It's going to be painful. Pass the turn. Suspicious Snoop. Could go for the fight as one here. <laughs> if we get to kill a Snoop, I'm fine with it. If we... If it's just like a prospector, I think we just trade off and that's fine. What you gonna do, huh? What you gonna do? <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're gonna let it through. Um, uh, let's go healer's hawk here. Get some more life gain going. I know like our two ones can be better in some ways, but not when they're. If we were on the play, we'd have a better shot. Um, with them on the play. I, I, this is this is the biggest issue. I think Goblins is our worst matchup because it's probably the fastest. We did see Mono Red earlier, but the thing is we gain enough life that we can kind of counteract the Mono Red typical gameplay or this play style that they've got going on. Um, doesn't play anything? Ooh. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, all right, let's go. Let's go attacking. Gain two. Let's go. Uh, is Saracen actually going to get there at all? All right, Aspirant. We're so far away from 30 life. Um, and let's go Dauntless Bodyguard. Onto the Aspirant, I believe. Pass the turn. It's a Cranko. Alrighty then. Cranko. A little bit terrifying. Okay, pass my turn. Um, let's go.
So I can use fight as one to kill uh, the Kranko if they block. But if he blocks the Sacred Cat, then I don't have that shot. But that's also fine, because then it's something we can bring back from the graveyard pretty easily. Takes it all. Nice. Down to 11. Venerable Knight. Um, selfless Savior or Sarah Ascendant here? Let's go Selfless Savior. I don't feel like Sarah Ascendant's really going to do much for us. All right, and then we just hope they don't have a Chieftain. A Chieftain just destroys us here. Oh, Chieftain off the top. There we go. All righty then. <laughs> uh, I guess we hope that they swing all in and don't do their math. Because I think we do have enough for lethal if they swing all in. Instigator off the top. Oh, yeah. And another Chieftain that they can play with this Root Prospector. Yeah, create some tokens. That's just the few. So it is better here to play out the Chieftain. You sacrifice three guys, play the Chieftain out, and you get more power overall on the board. Holding back a blocker. Yeah, holding back a lot of blockers. Uh, which probably means we're just dead, right? We're done? Okay, cool. We're done. <laughs> Alright, let's not face off against goblins with this deck. And then we're going to be totally victorious. Alright, we're... we're Chasing the 14 lands. We're going to try out the one land hand deck, uh, which is still going to be awesome. Uh, this one, I think we're probably going to go for the life gain side of things. If we can get up to 30 with Sarah send it and everything. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, and we got the land. Oh, yeah. All right. So Sarah Ascendant. Gain some life. Leon and Vanguard. Gain some more life. Shrewing him in. Down to 19. Now we get the Legion's Landing flip on the next turn. Huh. Unless they get a blocker. Uh, actually, what we'll do is we'll go Selfless Savior. Legion's Landing. We, we will sacrifice uh, the Selfless Savior to whatever here. We just want to flip the Legion's Landing. Oh, we actually have Charge as well. <laughs> All right, uh, charge. This also gives us a little bit more life gain. Uh, we will sacrifice, protect you. Uh, and then we have Sarah Ascendants online, which will be six sixes. <laughs> All right, well, there's the power of the deck, so we can do it. Guys, we're, we're even with the deck. We're two and two. Obviously, it's got skills. <laughs> we are up against Legend Roadkill. And one land hand, we're going to keep it again. It was great for us last time. Obviously got to do the exact same thing this time. Uh, we'll go, I guess, Sky March or Aspirin, right? It's the most possible damage. Life game would be nice, too. Bowman Courier. Oh. No blocks. That's fine. And a red deck, huh? Well, that's, that's not... Um, the land maybe 14 lands is too few <laughs> who would have thought fatal push is the healer's hawk cool we take it down to 18 legion's landing is at least interesting though um okay vanguard Playing it out here, because if we can play out another creature with it, it's really nice for next turn. If they have shock or fatal pushes, whatever, sure. We'll just hate them forever and always. Braid. Okay. <laughs> Spending a two mana spell on my one drop. There we go. Now we're all in, guys. We got this. Uh, all right. 
Selfless Savior. Um, Legion's Landing. Uh, one cool thing too is we can actually replay Legion's Landing with uh, Lurus at some point. Pass the turn. Bowmat Courier is getting a little bit annoying. Uh, this might be a good turn to force the discard. It means that we can't flip Legion's Landing though. Guardian Idol. Scrap Heap Scrounger. Can't block. So yeah, we definitely block if they go now. Yeah, okay. So pass to my turn. Uh, we get the charge, which is pretty nice. Debating if I just want to go for the pump on the life linker here. Uh, because we actually have to flip the land and then use charge if we want to. And we can just get in for a pretty big hit. Let's do it. All right, so pump on the life linker. Let's see if they'll block the aspirant here. Flip the legion's landing. Takes it all. What's what does charge get to us? So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine damage. Or play out like a venerable knight and get more damage on the next turn. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, pass the turn. Down to eight. And we're back up at 20. I don't even know what's going on, man. I, is, is this guy even playing magic? <laughs> Uh, most likely sacking the Bowmat Courier. Okay. I don't know why you wouldn't attack first there, though. Because we likely weren't going to block with the Venerable Knight. Not at what their board state is at the moment. I guess maybe with Selfless Savior. No blocks. We take three. That's fine. Down to 17. All right, I believe we have lethal here if they don't have removal. Gadrek, can't actually block. That's only three. Oh, wait, wait, one one thing dies. That is the four. Uh, I think we still have lethal though. They're down to six. And people were saying I shouldn't be playing charge. You're all wrong. <laughs> Yeah, and that's why you play charge in this deck. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Dude, we're three and two. Easy peasy. Three and oh against non Gabo decks. All right, up against Aetherclaw. Uh, we actually are doing really well with the one land hands. So we're going to keep the one land hands because uh, because that's what we do. You know. Dad jokes are, are lame, but funny because they're lame. That just, like, sums up my life right now, I think, a little bit. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Not a land. Uh, but uh, Dauntless Bodyguard onto Venerable Knight, sure. I mean, that's four power on the board really quickly. Pass the turn, down to 18. I, this is a clock. They have to, like, destroy this. I, I think the other worst card for us is Extinction Event, probably. Like, Extinction Event would be terrible for us. <laughs> uh, but that that's okay. All right, Vanguard. That's six power on the board, folks. Down to 12, past the turn. Do you have Extinction Event here? Of course they do. <laughs> Uh, they could have pressed even. Dang it. I was hoping. All right, land. Hey, we got the land. There we go. All right, let's go Sarah Ascendant and uh, let's go Sacred Cat. Pass the turn. One threat, one fodder type of thing. Uh, that way we can gain some other life later. Charge is actually a little bit tempting to try to get us up to the uh, level of Speaker Heavens, which we can probably do on the next turn if we can keep this alive. Okay, Fetal Push. Thatsies. Speaker Heavens. Okay. We found a land. What are we gonna what are we supposed to do with land? <laughs> uh I might bring Luris to hand now. I've already seen a thought seize from them though. <laughs> yeah, let's bring it to hand. It gives us the highest chance of being able to start doing actual things. 
and actual things are good things to do. Yasharn. Uh. Alright, play out Lurus. Pass the turn. No attacks. Yeah, it's hard not to play it with other stuff, but... Alright, that gets him a Uro. Uh, so, Giant Killer, I think, is what we're hoping for. Giant Killer would be great. Does this have Vigilance? I can't remember. Okay, Non-Vigilance. That's, that's helpful. Giant Killer, come unto us. Keep that one. Ah, dang it. <laughs> uh, by the way, this is one of the best. This is the deck that was like run over and over again in uh, earlier. And so that's awesome that we get to play this up against, you know, one of the best decks of all time. All right, Dauntless Bodyguard onto Luris. Um, one of these guys from the sideboard. Let's go with Speaker of Heavens, I guess. Speaker of Heavens, Healer's Hawk. So life gain is what's kind of important and cool here. Um, so now we'll say no attacks. Pass the turn. Because we can actually block with Lurus and Sacred Cat to block the Yasharn and kill it. They're gaining life, that's fine. But we're building up our board, obviously. Alright, so block, block like this. I should block with the Dauntless Bodyguard there. What was I thinking? That was a misplay. I meant to do that. Dude, why? What? It didn't give me another chance to respond. Oh, I can't sacrifice because of Stinking Yasharn. Okay. Right. Forgot about that. <laughs> I was thinking it just was for paying for stuff. So players can't uh, pay life or sacrifice non performance for spells and, or activated abilities. Uh, I forgot about that, that second part there. Okie dokie then. <laughs> I mean, we, we lost that game a while ago anyway. So we're going on to the next one. Yeah, two of our losses were against Gabos. That was uh, the other best deck in standard or in historic that we lost against. So, I mean, like, honestly, we're doing okay against the more jank stuff. And that's what matters. Keep this. This is actually quite swell right here. Uh, yeah, a bunch of lifelinkers with a charge into Speaker of the Heavens. Yeah. <laughs> I do believe I will do that. All right, let's go. Uh, we're, what we're hoping for probably the most here is um, an, another land that doesn't start doing damage to us. Thoughtseize. Speaker of the Heavens going away or Legion landing? Legion's landing. Okay. Ooh, yep, yeah, there we go. We got it. Alright, Speaker of the Heavens. I guess we'll attack in now. Um, and it's it is always difficult to throw away damage with the fairy guide mother. But we're gonna do that. We can also just buy Luris next turn. So one, two, three, four. Yeah, not quite enough. We get it next turn with the charge. Lurus to hand. Pass the turn. So yeah, honestly, another land wouldn't be bad here. Rude! The doofus face. Man, some people just play the play the dumb. Uh, I'd like to get Selfless Savior out before Luris. I know that they have Thought Seizes as well, but I think this is just butter. We like butter. 
Fatal pushes the warden. Okay. How many fatal pushes? Oh, yeah. Okay, just three. Okay, it's a good thing they didn't have, like, lots of good stuff against us or whatever. Crap. <laughs> what do you do about that? I guess you resolve Alluris and uh, start playing good stuff. Okay, fast turn. Karn. So Graftigger's Cage is going to be annoying here. Hormod script. Uh, that's better than Grafdigger's Cage, and we can actually kill Karn now. Yeah, and I think we're going to have to, because I'd rather not get to uh, Grafdigger's Cage. Oh no, they sacked our graveyard! Yeah, two hits. Pass the turn. See how bad it gets. What's up, Carlos? Five mana. Obviously, they've got nothing else, right? Oh, wait, no. They're going to have their fourth fatal push. Clearly. <laughs> Giant killer, healer's hawk, charge. Okay. Um... Okay, two there, one here, or three there. We will charge to kill it. Well, maybe not. Okay, Assassin's Trophy. Uh, we're fine with Karn staying on, staying where he's at. That's fine. Like, the issue is if they could bring out like a Mind Stone here and are able to bring it out as a blocker instead. That actually would be tough for us. Uh, we will take action. We will grab a free land. Dude! That's so nice. They want to charge here. I don't think we do. We'll play that back out too. God, <laughs> dude, this guy. What a great guy. <laughs> And uh, giant killer out as well. Sacrifices the chef at dunes. Uh, yeah, we're fine with that right now. Sure, we'll grab another land. I mean, that's really thinning the deck for us. Grabbing two lands out already. Yes, yes. <laughs> Back up with a winning record again. <laughs> oh man, maybe I should just stop here. I don't know, cause uh, this is this is too good. This is too, too good. This is just well, we weren't in mythic. We weren't against meta necessarily. We have lost the three games against meta decks. Uh, so yeah, so we've lost the three games against meta decks. Uh, can we actually keep this? I hate not having a basic planes. Uh, but we do have two lands, so we're going to keep it. Uh, and let's go for damage output. Venerable Knight, pass the turn. Here we go. What you going to do about it? Boop. Uh, attack in. Weirdly enough, we don't necessarily want Dauntless Bodyguard to protect Venerable Knight because it's the one thing that can put counters onto a Dauntless Bodyguard to make it actually better. And so I could go for like Legion's Landing or Saracen it here um, over it, but we also just have damage output, right? So I guess we do go for it. And now we have protection against board wipe stuff. The double charge is also a little bit interesting. We can get in for eight damage here and we can get through Annoying blockers like these guys. Okay, swing in. 
The issue is that I don't know how we get past the love struck piece after this. All right, take three. Sarah Ascendant, Legion's Landing. Pass the turn. Oh man, what do we do against someone that plays blockers? Crap, <laughs> what, what, what do we do? <laughs> how is how supposed to do this? <laughs> like legitimately though, this is kind of ridiculous. All right, uh, let's see. So we can keep recasting the Dauntless Bodyguard with Luris by flipping it over. Uh, so that's nice. Of course, we only have so many things that we can block with. And charges are nice when you have more of them. Play Sarah Ascendant. Um, swing all in. So I want them to block the Dauntless body Bodyguard here. Uh, that's fine. Oh, okay, they don't block. Uh, that's that's also fine. Okay, by Luris. Pass the turn. I, we got him down to 10. I mean, this we're doing something here, right? And now we just have to go wide and hope that they leave. They don't uh, hold up blockers for a turn. Hope that they don't have anything super crazy. And then I think we actually still have a chance at a shot like our best draws now i think are soul wardens if we oh, okay oh that's bad <laughs> that's really not good for us oh uh, they're holding up all the blockers now um okay giant killer gives us something that we could do okay so giant killer kill you now there's no more blockers swing all in uh and now charge is actually a pretty big hit We got, yeah, we got rid of their blockers. They do have the Lushuck Beast, which gives them two blockers on the next turn. But if we can go wide enough. Okay, down to five. We lose one creature. They lose two. Pass the turn. Um, Up to 23. The issue is, is we don't have, like, I wish there was a permanent uh thing that you could use for, like, charge ability that was in the one drop slot, of course. Uh. If there was something we can do with Luris to keep giving us that like extra pump over and over again would be nice. All right, Love Strike Beast comes out. Okay, we got him down to five. We're just going to hope they don't have life gain. We're going to try to outvalue them with Luris, basically. Okay, Luris. Uh, Sarah Ascendant, yeah. I mean, Vanguard does give us life gain. Now, we have to be playing from the, the graveyard when we can. Oh, what I should have done is sacrifice down this bodyguard, brought him back out for Luris. That's what I should have done. So now we're potentially screwed, actually. All right, pass the turn. Yeah, okay. That was that was bad. I messed that up. I should have down this bodyguard. Guarded. How many charges do we have? Let's let's check our trusty dusty uh, MTG assistant here. Um, okay, we already have used both of our charges, so we're not hoping for that anymore. Uh, Ronus can win, or can do stuff. We have token generation each turn. Alright, so Giant Killer, we also have tap with Giant Killer, which is nice. Alright, has the stompiness. Why does everyone have to have the stompiness? Faster. We also have a dent to the first four, right? So we have things to do every turn. They also, if they had land here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Co Coco. Uh, I guess we still just hope that they go all in on an attack. 
Or we start finding our flyers. That'd be nice. All right, Speaker of Heavens. Let's see. Um, yep. No attacks. I are we actually still kind of favored here? I could have got up to twenty-seven that turn, but we didn't. We weren't going to be able to uh, tap down with the Speaker of Heavens anyway. Uh, they're going to have to start attacking in with Left Shock Beast pumping with Ronus to get in for the damage they need uh, to get the trample. At least that's what they should do. Yeah, if they attack in with non trampley creatures, then we're actually in pretty good shape. I shouldn't hover over it. Giving them all the clues they need. <laughs> Sings in with the one ones, Ronas. Okay, that's cool. All right, create a life linker. Do we actually might get there? This is ridiculous. Um, so one one. Um. Venerable Knight, maybe, as well, just to, like, stop a bit more damage. So we gain one, two, we take three. Um, we don't gain enough to get up to Speaker of the Heavens mana, or uh, activation. So it's another target creature gets it. Yeah, we'll block like that. They have Amber Cleave. That's bad. Onto the Ronus with the Death Touch. Yeah, that's really bad. We really need to keep our uh, what's his bucket alive. All right. Uh, okay, pass to my turn. Soul Warden. Well, we can get in for one point of damage right now. I think that's game, right? I don't think there's any way that we can get past that. Other than maybe they go all in here. There is a chance they get a little bit too greedy. I mean, what they should be doing here is using the Ronus pump on stuff. All right, yeah, Bone Crusher. I believe that they can play it safe enough now with the Ember Cleave on a Death Toucher. They just have to keep swinging at that every turn, and like we're never going to be able to completely beat it unless we find. Uh, what's his bucket? Um, the tapper guy, but even that's going to be a turn slow. So yeah, there's, there's no way out of that. Okay. You got us. We're back to an even win rate. All right. <laughs> Up against Aniston and we have three lands, dude. I, I'm not sure if I should keep this. That's probably too many lands, <laughs> but, but 14 lands, obviously actually a pretty good amount for this kind of a deck. <laughs> All right, let's go. Yeah, Venerable Knight. Pass the turn. Double Legion's Landing is actually kind of nice. All right, so Bodyguard. Body yada 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 yada. And shrink him in. Dude, what do we even do with all this ramp? I guess we can keep like uh, cycling over the Legion's Landings. Oh no, because we're going to flip one of them. That's fine too. Dude, so much mana. What do we do with all this mana? 
I guess we play out Luris, right? Okay, bye Luris. Legion's Landing number two. Fast the turn. Actually, I guess if they keep flipping over, we can have extra mana and we can have uh, Luris be doing cool stuff the whole time as well. So actually, that, that does work out for us. And there's another one. All right, sweet. Uh, Chef at Dunes. So we want to play out Luris first here. Um, so play out Luris. Let's give Fairy Guide Mother to one of the tokens. Swing all in. Uh, we will keep the untapped one. That goes to the graveyard, which we can play now. <laughs> Uh, we want them to block Dauntless Bodyguard. Yeah, that's that's perfect. Because now we actually want to play that and give Luris some protection. Play this out. Protect the Luris. There we go. There we go. <laughs> you gotta dance the body out of for the, the wins. <laughs> Yada 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 yada. <laughs> Fey wishes more blockers. Where's where's our charge when we need one, right? I mean, the life gain is go is on point right now. At least that's there. We can make so many tokens too. All right, Vanguard. Legion's Landing. All attack, all attack. Keep the untapped one. Dude, this is so good. Um, we also could have Chef at Dunes online next turn as well. I just realized Chef at Dunes would be really nice. Let's. I mean, we can replay whatever we want, right? We don't get the counter out of this. Oh no. But we get Dauntless Bodyguard back onto Luris. Fairy Guide Mother. And pass the turn. All right, and then we have Chef at Dunes for the win next turn, or at least it should be the win. Unless they have bounce all your stuff somehow here. All right. Tons of ramp. Opponent scoops it up. Sweet. <laughs> nice. Dude, this deck. Uh, and that was in Mythic, right? We have wins in Mythic? <gasps> All right, so into the wrap up for One Drop Tribal. Uh, as you can see, uh, we are dominant against Mono Blue and Gary Dex. Uh, and we actually, we ended up with a 55% win rate in normal play mode. We were 57, or sorry, 50% in in, uh, in Mythic, 57% in just normal free play. Uh, which I mean, we got to play a lot more decks to really get a good percentage with this. But uh, overall, it's fun. I mean, I did not expect this to actually do that well at all. Uh, there's just so many good decks. Uh, so yeah, Gruul, we actually won 2 1 against. Uh, goblins were our worst matchup for sure. Uh, I guess there was one, or these goblin decks that had some black mana as well. So yeah, uh, there, uh, yeah, so black. The, the two decks that we really struggled against were Goblins and then this uh, this deck here. Every other one, I feel like we had at least a shot against, whatever. So yeah, overall, deck is fun. It's ba it's busted. It's I'm not it's not busted. Let, let's not say that. It's it's fun <laughs> and it's interesting. And I'm glad that we're able to play it. Oh my gosh, it goes down so far. <laughs> and uh, 14 lands. 
I actually felt like too much at times, which was really surprising. So yeah, 14 lands actually the way to go as well. So yeah, overall, this deck was super fun to play. I'm glad that we were able to do this on stream. Uh, if you guys want to check us out on stream, click the link down description below. I'll make sure that you like and subscribe on the YouTube channel, and we'll be doing some more stuff here on stream.